Hello, my name is Raul Ramirez. We're with the Catch Wrestling Alliance. We have a very special guest, Robert Ward, all the way from England. He just won the Snake Pit Wigan World Championship. He is a real catch wrestler in that he, it is his base style, and he used it effectively to win his matches and ultimately become world champion. Welcome, Robert. Hi, Ralph. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a real great pleasure. Um, you know, especially since we were kind of uh, in England, uh, you know, back in the day as well when you were starting out. And um, can you can you kind of give us a little bit of a background as to like how or when you started catch wrestling? Yeah, just as I was saying before, I um, so my background as a as a teenager was all striking stuff. I did karate, Thai boxing, boxing. Uh, they were quite big in Manchester, but I never really um, stuck at any of them. And then um, I went to a gym where they had Thai boxing on and it was like this grappling, but I didn't know anything about it. And um, I spoke to one of the guys, you know, like, you know, what is it? This guy called um, Adam Waterfield. He just said, uh, if you want to learn like decent, like mixed martial arts base, you learn catch wrestling. And this was like in 2007 or eight. And I had no idea about grappling, never mind catch wrestling. Um, so I was like, oh, right, okay. Um, you know, I, I didn't know any of the rules about cheers anyway. And after a, a couple of weeks, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try it out because I've always tried out different martial arts. I like to do the research and like how they form as well, the history and stuff. And uh, so I, you know, I, I took on his word. I went there and uh, I've never been so scared. <laughs> it was uh, about 30 lads there and it was extremely intimidating to see uh, like everything I knew I wouldn't be able to use, even though I was, I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a pro tie box or anything, but I wasn't an amateur, you know, I knew how to kick and punch properly, but I couldn't use any of that there. And I realized, oh, I'm a, I'm a new, like I'm literally a beginner and I had to literally be shown how to walk, <laughs> how to sidestep, how to sprawl, how to do all these things. And I didn't know I was like a old Bambi basically. <laughs> and these guys were in their thirties, in their forties. Some were quite overweight, but they were still fit in their way. And they had decades training in like freestyle and catch and Ian Bromley was the instructor there. And it was just, it was like fight club <laughs> in a way, <laughs> but it was like an organized fight club. You know, there weren't like people with like blood and everything, but it was just, it was just scary. And um, they showed me a single leg of my first lesson and I loved it, but I was, I was scared, you know, and um, I stuck at it for about two years. And um, sometimes I even questioned, should I keep doing this? Because I was I was very nervous going in um, and I, I never got injured, but I was I was scared of it because I realized how brutal this style was. But it, at the same time, I was drawn to it because it was so effective. Um, and I was seeing all these beginners come in and they never came back and it happened all the time. But after about the second year, of doing catch wrestling, things were starting to click for me. Um, I was starting to get people like with simple things, but they're, they're, they're the best techniques, aren't they? Yeah. And you know, the double wrist lock, it was starting to click where I didn't have to be stronger than them to pull it off. That was a very hard technique to learn in a way. It took me a while. Uh, I could get someone quite heavier than me and still get the wrist lock, but that took ages. Um, and then um, once I could actually get people, my confidence was starting to, you know, elevate and my stress levels, my butterflies going into the, the gym, it was just starting to subside. And, you know, I, I never looked back, but it's, um, it taught me how to, to deal with stress in matches because I learned it so quickly on in training which is, I think we've all seen people that have never really 
trained properly and then they do a tournament or a competition and they're just so overwhelmed and it mm. you know either lose quickly or they look terrified you know and we've all yeah. seen it yeah but i i got that in day one of catch wrestling <laughs> <laughs> so it has helped me in a big way i don't really get scared it's more of a puzzle and mind game now like i do get get scared obviously but it's um it's keeping it at bay yeah and that was uh that was my background really and ian bromley uh ran the show he was amazing he was uh so respected and the people that were with him were there for years and he trained at wigan for over 20 years with roy wood when he was about 15 or 13 or something and uh, doing freestyle um and then a few years on i think when he was like 18 he started to learn some catch holds they don't teach children catch holds in wigan i think you gotta be 18 which i totally get mm-hmm. <laughs> you know you have to learn to wrestle anyway so yeah learn that first <laughs> yeah yeah that's definitely one of the things i think people kind of uh i think they get caught up with like kind of like the flashiness of some of the submission holds and so then yeah. they just want to jump to that but like if you know the wrestling very well then that's how you get the or you become more successful at submissions if you can control the person right so the wrestling is really the most important thing it's the most important thing and it's also the messiest <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> It doesn't look nice it's messy the scrambles are crazy it's um it's hard to follow but ultimately that's where you get the control isn't it so, mm-hmm. yeah um i was way more into my submissions at my beginning but it's funny because it's transitioning now i'm way more into my my mat wrestling and my positioning than i am my submissions so it's I think over the years you, you change oh, my camera. <laughs> you change and it goes in a circle isn't it what you get mm-hmm. into and then after a while you, you you find your love for submissions again or whatever you don't tend to stick at one thing all the time mm-hmm. well that's the beauty yeah. about catch wrestling right because like uh, you can find variations of all these uh positions and submissions and stuff so you can it's kind of yeah you can kind of flow. Mm-hmm. yeah totally so you recently uh competed in wiggins the latest world championship can you kind of tell us about that experience yeah well um I, everyone told me i was mad for doing it it was two weeks before my wedding <laughs> 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 but it was um so i would have been training for it but i didn't know when the date was so i was uh, i was keeping fit and um i knew what the weight class was excuse me over the pandemic i put on a lot of weight like we all did and i i knew i wouldn't be able to get to 82 kilograms um i probably could have but it would have really killed me so i i did the 90 kilograms so i did the weight class above than the time i did before mm-hmm. and then so that's why i did that and i i was just i was actually for a year now i've been running a club with Jimmy Kelly, he's um, <clears throat> been a big help in that, just to keep uh, catch wrestling in Stockport. So it's like mm-hmm. um, South, South Manchester, for anyone mm-hmm. that doesn't know, in the UK. Um, and so like between a few of us, we've been keeping the club going. Um, and it was, it was quite an informal club where whoever turned up to the club we would you know talk about like oh what do you want to work on and then we'll touch on things that they uh, want to learn and we'll do the the techniques do variations and then um and then do the reversals all the counters so you're not just learning a technique you're learning like all the way around you know there's there's a lot to one technique and you can get it from different positions like um like a a double wrist lock can be standing it can be on the mats it can be side control it can be half guard it can be everywhere but the body mechanics are still the same Mm -hmm. and then do and then do all the reversals all the counters but it's also not even a submission it's a hold where you can throw somebody you know it's it's a transition as well so even though it's one technique it can be 20 different things and that's kind of how I did my training. I um, Ian taught me, he said, look, you know a lot of moves, but how well do you know them? 
you know, and it and it it really made me think. Like, um, there's probably only four techniques, like submissions, that I would definitely attack my opponent with with full confidence. And he was to, um, and he he taught me, you need six submissions, and you need to know them in loads of different positions. You need to know the counters so that when they counter you, you can see it happening. And you can learn these other techniques, but they're never going to be a base because you're going to put everything into these six submissions and you can pick what those are because we're different, but ultimately pick, you know, choose wisely what you want to learn. And it just, it really made me think. So for the tournament, I picked double wrist lock. I picked um, north, south, neck crank. I love that. And then there was a, the, um, in the referee's position, you know, the turtle position, mm -hmm. the one-handed toe holds. I've seen you do a few of those on your YouTube channel. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, putting your shin bone on the uh, the ankle, and you're mm -hmm. like, you know, slicing it. I really like those. Um, so I, I picked those as like my subs, and then I just practiced mat wrestling so much. Like that's that's my best. Um, those are my those are the best things I am at catch wrestling. It's not so much the takedowns or the takedown defenses. It's not even the submissions, but it's um, once we get on the mats, I'll counter you. I'll, I'll either be on top or I'll be below, underneath, and I will get to that pin in one way or another. And uh, Roy Wood showed me a lot of mat wrestling over the years, and I just fell with it. And it was the positioning and the traps. Like, I didn't realise... Because obviously we have a pin in our sports, how offensive you could be underneath. You know, people mm -hmm. tend to think, you know, uh, jiu-jitsu, you know, you're very offensive underneath, which is quite commonplace. But not, it's, it's. I think that's something that's still not quite um, commonplace in um, people's opinions in catch wrestling. It's like once you're underneath, you're losing. Well, you are, but... There is so much techniques where you can counter and be extremely offensive, and it's it's one of my um, go tos. I uh, I did it in one of my matches, my first match. I sh um, I did like a half, like kind of like a rubbish headlock. I did try to do it, but it wasn't great. But I was trying to get in underneath him to mat wrestle him and then get the pin. It didn't quite work out that way, but eventually. I managed to do it, but it was, um, it's just, I'm that confident with the mat wrestling than I am the takedown. And then um, Roy Woods even told me the best catch wrestler he ever met was when he was young. It was a guy called, um, what was his name? Uh, Billy Joyce, Bob Joyce. Yes. And Billy Joyce. Yeah. Uh -huh. Billy Joyce. And mm -hmm. the way he described, he was older than Billy Robinson. He, um, he said he used to like knock him blue kind of thing. Mm -hmm. He was quite than they know he had quite a few years on him and experience but he would the way he approached training and matches is he would give them something like a neck a leg or whatever obviously his opponent would take it and take him down but the second that happened he preempted it and then he'd do a counter and then he'd be on top and it was that that mind game of i'm not one step ahead i'm already two steps ahead mm -hmm. and the more years you do it, you, you you start to think like that, and that's how I was really trying to train for this tournament. And uh, so I put everything into my wrestling. The gym we did, like or the gym, we kept going in Stockport. We did so much mat wrestling because there's there's a lot of freestyle wrestlers going in this tournament, and so we just sort of said, look, we're not going to be the guys that take them down as much. We're going to be the guys. They either take them down or get taken down, mm -hmm. but we'll mat wrestle them on top, and that's mm -hmm. where we shine. So, and and the guys liked that approach because we do do a lot of that. So it made sense to to put, say, like seventy percent into that. Um, yeah, and that's that was uh, probably the unique side of our training into in comparison to the other athletes. And yeah, both, it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah that was that was Oh, because that I think that is actual catch wrestling because 
uh, I, I think because of the amateur styles of wrestling and grappling being so popular, I think a lot of people kind of uh, uh, think in that way where it's like you don't want to get taken down or you give up points mm-hmm. and this and that. But since there are no points in catch wrestling, then uh, a- you can use it as a strategy like, oh, take me down and see what happens, you know? Yeah, I think you see it a lot in um, no-gi um, submission grappling as well. Um, like they'll bait people to take them down and do a submission. It's like, it's still like a different style, but that concept is the same as how we train, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's brilliant. That's, can you kind of talk us through, because like uh, there's a lot of really, so for people who don't know, all your matches should now, are, I think they're all on. The so every single match is on um, the Snake Pit Wigan uh, YouTube channel, all of them. And yes. it's also on Facebook as well. Yeah, so on I Facebook. You know, Twitter as well, account. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. You probably, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, I don't have Twitter, so I don't know too much about it, but um, I'm pretty sure they do. So anyone that's okay. got Twitter and Instagram. Yes. Yeah. So I think they're kind of uh, releasing them kind of slowly, but um, so I think they should be, at least all of them are, should be out now. Yeah, they're all out now. So oh, that's awesome. Good. Awesome. Yeah, they so, really went for the suspense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's great. I think because it's it's historic so i i think they they should be making sure that everything gets photographed and filmed and stuff so uh, to preserve all that yeah andrea roy wood's daughter andrea wood she had uh integral part and in organized she pretty much single-handedly did it you know with with a bit of help but she was amazing organizing that mm-hmm. i bought her a drink on the night just thought you've done an amazing job for this sport so i got her uh I got our mojitos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Nice. very> <laughs> yeah. Well, can you can you tell us a little bit about your your last match then? Your the one where you won the championship? Because there are yeah. a lot of great pictures of, of it <laughs> on on yeah. the. Uh, mm-hmm. So that guy uh, it was Adam. Um, I never met him before actually, uh, which was surprising because he's um, I think he's from Wigan. Um, he trains at Wigan snake pit and everything so we both had the the snake pit wigan <laughs> rash guards mm-hmm. he mentioned it before our match it was like ah, oh, two snake pit people it's like, hey. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but um yeah he was he was a lot faster than me um which kind of shocked me because even with my weight i am quite quick i don't really train that way i'm just sort of naturally fast i tend to use my speed rather than my strength. I'm not the strongest person, but I usually can be the faster person out of the two. But he was faster than me and he picked up my leg, which really surprised me. Um, so I I, I pulled my, my, uh, my foot that was on the ground. I pulled it back as far as I could to try and lean on him to get all my weight on it. So the single leg was very heavy for him. I was trying to do that, but then um, I think he abandoned it or he tried to pick me up or something. It was just too much weight. And so we got back into like the pummeling, you know, the swimming, the mm-hmm. clinch. And then it was so fast. You know, like what you what you see in your brain, and then when you watch it on the video, it's two different things. Yeah. But um I thought I did a double leg on him, but watching back on the video, it was like a failed double leg, and then he got like a sort of like a, a rear bulldog headlock on me mm-hmm. but, but it was loose and um so i just um grabbed his elbow and hooked um behind his hip so i was even though he had my head i had his rear and then i managed to slowly slip out of it and then um i was on top and i just remember looking at him in disbelief I was on top, but he wasn't moving. And in catch, if you're underneath, you always move. It's one of the biggest things you do. Roy would always say, like, get up, move, do something, you know. And for about two seconds, he wasn't moving, but he was just in the referee's position. And I thought, now, quick, you know, do something. Like, I've got to attack him now. So I um, I love my Nelsons, my quarter Nelson and my three-quarter Nelson. Like, a big go-to for me. So I literally put my hands on the back of his head, straight away put it there, locked, and I just sunk it in. And he 
he um, his feet went to the sky and straight on his back quickly because uh, they put everything into it. Wow. And yeah, and um, that was it. It was over just like that. And I was that excited. I did a bloody um, cartwheel. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it was over before. Um, I couldn't believe it when the ref just blew the whistle. I was like, no way, you know, a bit of disbelief. Yeah, it was. Uh, I just thought of the second it happened, I just got a bit emotional because I just thought, you know, I just instantly thought of Ian Bromley, you know, like, I really, really, really want to show you this, you know, and he, he was the guy that was most responsible for teaching me everything I know about catch wrestling. He's obviously not here anymore. But um, that's who I thought of straight away. It was quite a, it was quite a hard week for me training the last week before it, because I was just thinking about him constantly. But when I won, I was like, I just shouted for Ian. Mm. It's it's not one man's accomplishment. It's all the other people, your training partners, your coach, all these different people that you pass ideas to. You learn from them, you know. And then obviously you think about the person most responsible and then it's just like, I just wanted to say thank you to him. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, th I think a lot of people, uh, well, we, so th there was, or I think for a while there, um, you know, after his passing, I think there, like, even on YouTube or social media, there were people bringing him up who, and, and it's really great that you know, some people who had never even met him were, uh, you know, revering him and uh, celebrating his life. And so I, I think that's all great. But like for those of us who who did meet, have, have the honor of meeting him and spending time with him or being trained by him or, you know, uh, training with him, uh, it's uh, he's a very special person. Uh, he definitely made everyone feel very loved. Uh, yeah. 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 So it's a very it's, funny individual. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the warmest, like the warmest guy, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I just, yeah, when I won it, I just thought of him. But all those moves I did in the final, you know, to win it, I just he spent time with me, teaching me that step by step. So you can't not think about that, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just glad I won it because I just thought it's not just for me. Like um, I did it for him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, one, one, one other thing about like your win, your championship win that I kind of wanted to highlight was that catch wrestling, even is with your main style, right? You've dabbled in other things. Dabbled but... in others, but it's definitely predominant. It's the longest one I've done. I mean, what have I done? Fifteen years of it. The longest spot I ever did after before that was Thai boxing three years mm -hmm. so nothing in comparison but I've done two two years of judo recently and then I've done on and off probably like a year and a half of Brazilian jiu-jitsu but very on and off like very mm -hmm. sporadic so it wouldn't even class as a year and a half you know you I know some guys that go to this gym so I, I go there you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. but but yeah, I've done 15 years of catch, so that's always going to be my main one. Yeah. yeah, but I think that that's really, or this really highlights that, like the effectiveness of catch wrestling, because I think you know people have these weird ideas where you got to be doing the freestyle, you got to be doing all these other things, um, and also in Wiggins tournament, I mean, we had a lot of people who are well accomplished in other grappling styles, right? But it was high level guys there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you being, you can say like you're a, a pure catch guy and you won, right? Yeah, yeah. That That's what made it more, um, more special, I suppose. Because yeah, definitely. We were, we were standing all together. We, there's a photo of all the wrestlers. And, you know, to the left of me, I've got John Hathaway, who's in the UFC. Really nice guy. And he's, and then I've got another guy to the right of me called Owen he's a judo national athlete <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. these guys are good you know mm -hmm. and it was just like I'm standing with them you know it's you know it's a bit of an honor really yeah 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 and it, it shows the effectiveness of catch wrestling and then also you know of yeah. course you had a, a great coach and but I mean like all these things yeah. ultimately show like 
cat wrestling is it, it's it's legit or it's a, it's a real thing you know <laughs> yeah the good thing is i mean a few years ago we were still having that battle of whether it was like legit or like if it's a, a martial art to to is it worth learning kind of thing but that mm -hmm. was years ago and it's not like that anymore it's just people still don't know much about it but it's definitely the case where people you know uh, people do approve of it you've got you've got people in the ufc making videos about oh i've learned this catch move it's not just josh barnett doing it now you see um you're seeing a lot of ufc guys doing it and then you're seeing a lot of um like famous jiu-jitsu guys saying oh you know i've learned this catch wrestling thing it's like they're not they're not insulting anymore. It's no longer a threat. It's just another martial art that knows what it is, you know, and it's it's a very, it's the most brutal form of submission style I've ever come across, mm -hmm. you know, and when people start to see it more and more, it's only going to get better. And it's certainly on its way. I'm liking the future of catch now because uh, it was quite depressing a few years ago. I was like, so many people were really like quite hurtful comments about it and it's like you don't even do catch how can you say that mm -hmm. and now it's now it's different oh cat is trying to get in also <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no problem. laughs> yeah 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 so so it's um yeah we're, we're at a different place in the world where we don't have to prove who we are anymore it's just we're proving how high up can we go now which is a much better place to be in for catch wrestling oh that's a great way to put it that's a, yeah because uh even now like so like i um i've been <laughs> you can you can introduce your cat like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not shy <laughs> yeah yeah no my, my cat will come out every once in a while so but um <laughs> anyway uh are, are you open to answering any questions because a few people on our live stream are, yeah yeah uh, that's why i did it i just wanted to you know get the public out like seeing what we are okay yeah. cool so we got a question from adriano ramos is there any advice on how to get good in catch wrestling uh yeah well so it ultimately depends on your situation if you have a catch wrestling gym or not if you don't best thing to do is learn wrestling uh, and i'm sure there's lots of wrestling gyms in like wherever you are so uh, but you can do a lot from calisthenics, not just free weights. Um, you have to be fit to be a catch wrestler. And you're picking somebody up. You need to be able to like, ha hold a certain weight. And the minimum is your own body weight because you're going to possibly pick up your opponent's body weight up, which should be your own. So things like that, eating well and all that. But in terms of learning techniques... There's so much online now. If you, I'm talking about someone who hasn't got access to a catch wrestling gym, which will be most people. And I think the closest form of martial arts that's catch rest um, to catch wrestling is folk style. Um, before the mat, like mat wrestling is the most uh, is the best part of catch wrestling because it's not about the takedown. It's not about the takedown defense. It's countering. Like you're inviting people to do a double leg, right? I'll do, you know, like the spladdle or whatever. I'll do a quarter Nelson. I'll do all these things. It's you, you're invite. If someone attacks you, you want it to be a trap for them. And learning mat wrestling, I think, is the closest way to be a catch wrestler. And the submissions come later. That should be the last thing to learn because ultimately you should be doing position first. Um, and it's things like learning balance, being on one leg, as silly as it sounds like. Wrestling's about unbalancing your opponent, but if your balance is terrible, you're not gonna be able to unbalance your opponent because yeah. you're fumbling everywhere. That was something that I um, I really struggled with because my, my core balance at the beginning was terrible. I didn't really think about it until I was starting to do a martial art where it was all about balance. So core exercises are a must and working on um, like one-legged stances 
and swapping it and doing really complicated things like that. And then when someone pushes you and you do lose your balance, you can quickly um, uh, come back around again and you're not on the floor. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's mainly the mat wrestling. And then it's if you do have a catch wrestling club, obviously go to it. But the last thing I could say is don't overwhelm yourself with too many techniques. And that's with any sport, any sport. As a beginner, you can learn 20 things and you think, I wish I learned 40. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, mm -hmm. I should be learning one thing a week, you know, mm -hmm. roughly, you know, it, it changes athlete to athlete. But if you learn one thing a week, you learn the counters, you learn the reversal, like the counters are reversals, but you learn how to stop it. And then it's a stalemate. You learn the counters, learn the technique, do resistant training. So your opponent's slightly resisting because when you learn a technique, you still can't pull it off. You know, mm -hmm. so what's the point? I've learned how to do this move. Can you pull it off? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, like we've all been there. There's loads yeah. of stuff I know how to do. I've never pulled them off though. But doing that resistant <laughs> training gets you to a point where you can do it. And then you, you, um, you improve the resistance more and more and more to a point where they are resisting properly and then you still pull it off, then you've got it. Yeah, yeah, so it requires a little bit of patience, right? So like, don't just try to learn everything at once. Yeah, literally. Yeah, as a, as a rule, I think we, we said like one technique a week and then, but that technique, you learn everything about that technique, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't just do it in one position, do it everywhere do the counters, do everything. And then that helps when you do another technique, there might be some um, similarity there. And then that's when the martial arts starts to come together. It's all these different pieces. And eventually, you know, it, you'll know how to do a move without realizing you could do a move because it was similar to something you learned the other week, you know, and yes. that's, that's, that's martial arts, you know? Yes. Yes, and like you're you're in your mind, you're you're putting or you're you're solving the puzzle, right? Because you have it's, the good foundation. Yeah, and it is a puzzle. Everyone relates it to chess, and I totally get why they say that. But it's also a puzzle, you know. There's all these different missing links, and I'll never learn all the missing, all these missing puzzles. I'll never learn all of them. But as long as I know enough of them, I can see the picture in that puzzle, and I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's how I see it. There's always going to be missing pieces. So I'm not looking to have a full picture because I won't have enough time in the, in my lifetime to learn catch wrestling, the full picture. It's not about that. It's about you using what you've got um, and, and outsmarting your opponent, you know, and you take it one match at a time or one training partner at a time. <laughs> wow. wow, well stated. Well, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, see the, the next question. So from yeah. from Robot Jocks, this is what piece of advice you go wait. Oh wait. what piece of advice you most go back to that Ian taught you? Oh, okay. Um so it wasn't technically a technique that he taught me that that really resonates in my head. What I took from him was his his principles, his theories on how to take on a match or whatever. And he was saying, uh, I think I've already touched on it, that the thing that he made me think of was how to trap your opponent. So that's not learning a technique. I've already got the techniques now. He's saying you can have all the techniques in the world, but if you don't know how to set them up, you don't know how to trap them, you're not going to pull it off. And then that's where you get these matches where they're a stalemate or you lose. And he made, it really made me think. So he would, he would t teach me things like if you want to have the leg, pretend to attack the neck. So what they'll do is they'll move in such a way where they expose the leg, you know, and there's your setup. And he was saying things like that. He was saying he's teaching you the um, – how to get these uh, body parts, how to trap your opponent. If your opponent attacks you, like where, what to do with it. It's because it's not enough knowing the technique, it's knowing when to pull it off. Mm -hmm. Like if I do a technique too early, 
um, he sees it a mile off and he'll do something different. And I've not, I'm not ready for it and then I'll lose. So it's, it's about timing and knowing what to do and when to do it. And technique is um, a small part of that spectrum of wrestling. And only you can figure that out in the end. But if you train it, it enough, you know, muscle memory and you have to be a very manipulative person to be successful in it. And it's it's trying to really uh, get yourself in that mind frame of being manipulative. And you can even talk to them and go, I'm going to get that neck. You know, even saying <laughs> you would, like, hey, like, you're laughing, but I'm going to get that neck. And you don't want the neck, you want the leg. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just like that summit he taught me and it I, I don't think anybody's ever like said that ever you know I've never heard it ever you know it's it's being manipulative that's your best weapon hmm. yeah. that's a that, that, that's great yeah because uh, I don't think um, I don't even think Roy mentioned stuff like that really but it seems yeah. characteristic of Ian Roy was more about learning counters Roy's I think when he was younger, the way he talks about it, obviously he's much older than me, so I never saw it, but the way he speaks of it is he was a very counter wrestler. So he would give you something and then his opponent would take it and he would straight away do the counter. And that's how he talked about Billy Joyce. So I think he really took that on really. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Ian, not ne- Ian did do stuff like that, but he loved to attack as well. He loved it. You know, he was very proactive at attacking. And he's saying, why would I defend when I could be one step ahead and attacking? So he did, He, you know, like, there were certain principles that he would, you know, uh, go against uh, Roy that way. But it, like, those are, those are uh, how you're being manipulative and your, your game plan, I suppose. It's not so much, all his techniques are there and they're all the same. I think your personality dictates how you wrestle. Mm-hmm. If you're very manipulative, you can have an advantage. And if you're not, you can learn it, but you just have to, you, it's just going to take you a little longer. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I certainly wasn't manipulative in any way. I had to learn that. Yeah. Yeah. Mind game. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next comment or question. <clears throat> so this is uh, from Ben Fisher. Uh, is you, you're really looking forward to go into the Snake Pit Wigan for your level one uh, certification next month. And then he says, BJJ has obviously become massive over the last couple decades. What's your yeah. thoughts on the future of catch wrestling? You think it's getting bigger? Oh, yeah. Well, we already talked about it. It's clearly oh. getting bigger. So, I mean, if you go on the internet and you see what content was out there in 2000, I didn't even know cat dressing then, but you can see what was out there then. It was hardly anything. And there was a lot of people who claimed they knew stuff when they didn't. Mm -hmm. But that's a perfect time to do that because there isn't anybody to say they aren't that. (laughs) You know? Uh-huh. So, yeah, like I, I would have been one of those people that would have believed them because I absolutely had no knowledge of it. So that's when they're rife in there. But as the years have gone on, when I started in 2007-ish, um, there was a bit more out there, but I couldn't find much content still even then. So I pretty much had to just learn when I was going to the club. Whereas now you change it to 2022, <laughs> There are so many DVDs about catch wrestling, not wrestling, catch wrestling. There's so much. Everybody's been trained by some authentic person. And um, and I'm I'm not even gonna go about the fake people. I'm talking about genuine catch wrestlers. The, there's been enough time that's passed now where they could have been with some old timers and learned catch wrestling in that space of time. And even high level wrestlers are going into catch wrestling and then they're releasing videos. So it's massive. And then on top of that, you've got a YouTube catch wrestling channel. There's a few others. There's a snake pit USA. Um, there's a Japanese snake pit. There's, there's quite a few now. And on top of that, they have like two or three tournaments, competitions a year. And these are all these different ones. And, um, 
Wigan in the UK, that's just getting bigger and bigger. Every so I've been to every one except 2018. Um it wasn't it, but my dad um was very ill at that time. So I, I I had to back out, but I've been to every single one and they've mm -hmm. only got bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And that just proves like people there's a market for it. People want to watch it. Not not everyone wants to do catch wrestling, but there was a lot of people watching it and it's very spectator friendly. The rules are simple. Pin or submit. <laughs> That's it. And so it's easy for a, a non-catch wrestler to watch it, uh, which I think helps the sport as well. It's very entertaining. And it's only going to get next. It's only going to get bigger in the next 10 years. I know it is. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we, we don't even have to, like, kind of even market as, like... Don't need to market even... anymore. People will go, people will look for you now. It's it's a different it's a different phase in catch wrestling. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So you were there um, at the first event, the, it was uh, a, in Robin Park, I believe, right or something. Oh, it was, like, it was at the freestyle. It was it was yeah. attached to a freestyle tournament. That that was, that yeah. Wow. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, you went against Stephen, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yeah, it wasn't because I mean I, I've known you for a while, but it's like uh, you know not quite sure which year it was. So I think you were right there at the beginning. I was there at the beginning. Yeah, I was there the first because uh, Roy quit doing catch. Um, people were annoying him. Long story short, uh, I don't think he likes to talk about it. But um, so he thought I don't want to do catch wrestling anymore. It's annoying me. Um, just going straight back into freestyle wrestling and then he just taught people freestyle which again was still a great club he still ran a great club but he quit that and he, he didn't do it for another like 15 years or so mm -hmm. um, that's a long time not to teach catch and then i again um ian bromley kept telling him you, you've got to teach catch you know you have to do it and eventually i think him and andrea and maybe a few other people kept you know pecking his head and he did change his mind and in 2011 he did his first catch wrestling seminar um for, for years and i was there ian brought me because i really i really wanted to to see it first time because this is where ian learned it when he was a kid so i wanted to see what environment he had because it was different um and I did, and I've been there ever since. I I don't live that far. I'm about thirty miles away from him, which I mean it's not local, is it? But you know, I'm I'm still fairly close. But we've got this um, massive shopping centre in between us, so the traffic's horrendous to get there mm -hmm. at the times of the um, the lessons. So I never can get it to the lessons, but I always went to the seminars, which were a Saturday morning. So I would go for a two-hour seminar Saturday morning and then we'd all go to the pub afterwards and have a pie and a pint <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but it it talk about old stories and what it was like when he was young and it was just it fascinated me so I got to see this next generation of catch wrestlers and he talked about the ones that aren't here anymore you know when he they were teaching him and I was just mesmerized by it and I knew these stories are gonna die out soon. So I wanted to be there at the pub and hear it. Even you know, I wasn't even drinking, you know, I just wanted to hear the stories. Mm -hmm. so, and it was, uh, he's quite a funny guy and he always had a funny story to say and he always repeats them uh, a thousand times in training. Like things like, um, don't have a long beard when you're training because in catch you can, you can rip it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll look for anyone with a beard and he'll go, right, I want a demo on you. And then he'll, he'll rip that beard. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's like, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny though. But everyone's got a smile on their face though. It's what you want. <laughs> oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. You don't want to like a miserable um, like environment, even because you're doing something that's difficult and kind of painful. And, uh, you know, last thing you want is like everyone just being miserable on top of that. Yeah, and that's easily done as well because your morale, your confidence, everything, it just depletes because, oh, 
as much as I love catch, it can really deplete you. And Roy's good that way to bring everybody up. You know, he's a funny guy, and you need that. You need that in a coach. You know, mm-hmm. and he's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, let's go ahead and get to the next uh, question comment here. So let's see, from Thea D. Why did you think Billy Robinson had trouble with catch wrestling at first, coming from a traditional wrestling background? What types of differences besides submissions? Ah, uh, uh, well, Billy Robinson, he was a national champ freestyle wrestler. Um, so he was a damn good wrestler when he went to the snake pit in his own right. I think he was 16 or something. And he was a big lad as well. So he would he was a damn good wrestler. And I read I read his book, Is It Physical Chess? I I've even met Billy Robinson. He did a seminar in 2012, 2011. Mm-hmm. And um his throat was very croaky. I think he had throat cancer and he just recovered from it. So it was hard to hear what he was saying. But uh from what I've heard from him and, and Roy mentioned it as well, and I think it's in the book, um when he went there, he was the he was one of the younger lads, and then there's these guys in their forties and they had pot bellies, they didn't look fit, and but they knew how to wrestle, but it wasn't so much the takedowns that made them so threatening because he could go for a double leg or any sort of takedown and they would counter him. And that's very much Roy's style of um, catch wrestling. It's exactly how he talks about it, exactly what he teaches. Um, And it's what I've been shown. So a freestyle wrestler is still very different to how I wrestle. Uh, I think they'll laugh at me if they saw my, you know, some of my takedowns. I mean, I am, I can do takedowns, don't get me wrong. But if you compare me to a freestyle wrestler, a purist, there's the difference there. And um, when you go for these takedowns, you're susceptible to mat wrestling and submissions. But you got, you still, I think what happened was he got counted big time after he attempted a, a takedown. And then they've mat wrestled him to a pin. And then when you, you're on a near fall, you, then you can do all your submissions, can't you? Mm-hmm. And he was a young lad when he went there. <laughs> and these guys were pretty, they were double his age. So they did have all the experience as well. And then that was that was it then. That's why he wanted to stay there and train because he was battering everybody. He was, he was murdering all these people. So you, you tend to stay where you can learn. And that's what he did. I think that's what Carl Gotch did. He was battering everybody. He even changed his name. I can't remember what his real name was. And then he stayed in Snake Pit Wigan because it was so um, tough there. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good attitude to have. It's like you, you might see it in some uh, stories where it's like you, someone finds a, uh, an instructor or a place where they can actually learn. But sometimes uh, with catch wrestling, you might see someone who has like a jujitsu background and they come and try it and it's difficult. But then they go back and say like, oh, if I learn jujitsu even better, I can I can beat catch wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, it's that phrase. If you can't be, beat them, join them. That's as simple as that. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. That is what happened then, I guess. <laughs> right, let's see what other questions you might have. Well, I'm uh, not used to sitting down this long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let me see. We'll do like one more question. Um, let me see. Well, Thea D is glad that uh, you you became world champion and. Thank you. Um, let me see. So, uh, do you like Jack Mountford? Oh, Jack Mountford. I've heard loads of good things about him. I've never met him though. Um, like, uh, I don't know too much about him, but I've seen some like YouTube videos, and he, he I, it looks good what he's doing. It is different to what I've seen though. Um, yeah, yeah. It is different. I mean, I know every single person is different. You can have ten people at the same gym they learn all the same stuff but then when they're actually wrestling and training and stuff they mm-hmm. you know they're a bit different aren't they even though they're doing the same style yes. but yeah so like, he his moves are pretty cool 
but um, I don't know too much about him, so I couldn't really comment if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah I believe he actually has like a judo background, like primarily. He does, yeah, yeah. he does, and I, I have seen him in a, a black belt and gi on, on a photo. And judo is amazing. I love judo, yeah. but yeah. I don't know too much about the guy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you've been seated for a while, so we'll probably let you uh, get back to training or moving around. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm actually taking a break from wrestling, to be honest. I think after the tournament, I um, I just thought it's nice to, I mean, I trained so much, and then it's nice to have a bit of a break, to be honest. Spend a bit of time with family and things, and then just um, I'll go back in here soon. But, yeah, it's just it's the best sport in the world, and anybody that, isn't isn't sure about it look it up you know if there's a gym nearby check out on the internet and you'll yeah you know you never know you might be you might become a catch wrestler like i did mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's just it's the best sport in the world and it's very addictive i think most sports are but yeah you have to be a certain personality i think to do this you know yeah and yeah, you don't know until you try it <laughs> yeah yeah. Are you on Instagram at all? Or where can people reach yeah, you? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. But I mean, I mainly use my Instagram, really. It's uh, Bobster Robster. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it, and you'll find me straight away. And uh, I've got a few wrestling videos in there um, amongst some uh, some family and friends stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah. so if anybody wants to reach out to you, yeah, Instagram's probably the way to go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I use the most. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. all right. So we'll go ahead and let you go. Thank you for uh, spending all this time with us. And it seems like people really enjoyed, you know, listening to you. And you, you know, everyone's Thanks really for happy for you. Me. Yeah. yeah you. Bro, I've been wanting to do this for a while, just to spread the words. And um, you know, I, I really do like your YouTube channel. I think you know, keep doing what you're doing. I'm just glad to be a part of it a little bit now. You know, yeah. it just it's getting bigger. That's what we like mm -hmm. to say. <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully we can see each other in real life soon yeah i'll uh i'll talk to the missus about los angeles <laughs> oh yeah 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 oh, even better e easier for me but i'll definitely show you guys around awesome all right all right yeah. thank you very much we'll go ahead and end the stream now thanks everyone for listening and watching